Hey, what is up, Elevate Church? Thanks so much for joining us online this weekend because this weekend, it's about the big game, isn't it? It's Super Bowl weekend, and we're excited to have you joining us online. Hey, take a moment to comment below, air high five us if you're excited for church because this weekend, it is the big game. And right away, let's just let's just get it out in the open. How many of you are rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs? If you're rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs, how many of you are rooting for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? That's what they maybe call it. But for me, there's no doubt I'm rooting for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I hate to admit it. I know a lot of people are not fans, but I am a Tom Brady fan. That's right. I've been a Tom Brady fan for the past almost two decades and Tom Brady is my favorite player. There's something about Tom Brady. I mean, he's an amazing quarterback. Some people call him the GOAT, the greatest of all time. What? And he's 43. He's going into his 10th Super Bowl. That's that's incredible. That is amazing to have won six Super Bowls. He's lost three of them, and he's going for his seventh Super Bowl championship. That is an amazing feat. And I started thinking about that, this big game. I started thinking about winners. I thought I started thinking about just the fundamentals of our faith and just what does it mean to have those winning characteristics? What are those things that Tom Brady and those teams have that maybe, just maybe, in our faith, we should have those same Super Bowl-like characteristics? And so this weekend, as, as you're joining us, I want to welcome everyone from wherever you are, whether you're sitting in your pajamas, whether you're driving in your car, whether you're taking a break, And I want to ask you this question to think about in your life, the fundamentals of faith, to think about, man, do I have those Super Bowl believers characteristics, those characteristic traits, those Super Bowl believing traits that I believe change the game, that I believe that are game winning, that create game winning drives for our lives, game winning purposes for our lives. I just believe that Super Bowl believers should have these characteristics, should have these these traits in their life. And so... I want to go on a tour, and I want you to just think about some of these traits that I believe Super Bowl believers have, if you're really a champion, if you're really a winner. And at the end of the day, man, if you know Jesus, how many of you know you're on the winning team? That's a good time to clap in church. That's a good time for an amen in church. If you're on Jesus' team, you're on the winning team. You win. In the end, you win. And maybe you're here and you're like, man, I don't really know Jesus. I'm just kind of learning about him. I want to tell you that the most important decision you'll ever make in your entire life is making a decision to go full court and follow him with everything that you have. It'll change your life and it'll change your eternity. But this weekend, again, we're talking about the Super Bowl believers traits. And so think about that first one. The first one, man, Super Bowl believers, what do they do? They support their teammates. That's right. Come on, say it with me. They support their teammates. They support teammates. Not only do they support their teammates, but they they celebrate their teammates. I love what it says in Proverbs 12, 25. It says that worry weighs a person down. How many of us got worry in our life? Worry weighs a person down, but an encouraging word, what? Cheers them up. We should be number one fans. Hold that number one finger out. We should be number one fans of our Christian teammates. Man, we should be supporting them. We should be building them up. We should be encouraging them. We actually get the word encourage, encouragement, from a Latin word that means to put heart. That's right, put heart into. And so we should be doing that. We should be putting heart into our teammates, encouraging them, building them up. What does it say in the Bible? It talks about celebrating. It says that a whole city celebrates when the godly succeed. See, our haters, they're sad at our successes and they're frowning. They're frowning when we're winning. But really, ultimately, we should be celebrating one another. We should be encouraging one another. And so this weekend, ask yourself that question. Hey, am I, am I someone who supports my teammates? Oftentimes, to support our teammates, we have to show up for our teammates. We have to be there. We got to be in the church. We got to be joining online. We got to be participating and be in the game. The Bible's pretty clear about supporting one another, encouraging our teammates. Let's be those type of people that support our teammates. The second thing those Super Bowl believers, I believe, have is, without a doubt, they are united. Come on, give me a you. You. You got your you, 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 you. They're united. Super Bowl believers are united to the mission of God. What is the mission of God? 
Well, Jesus told us a story about a guy named Zacchaeus, a friend. He went to his house and Zacchaeus was far from God and he came to a relationship with God. And he said, salvation, Zacchaeus, has come to your house. And in Luke 19, 10, Jesus told us that mission. He said, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. See, in the Super Bowl, they got a mission to win the game. But as Christ followers, we have a mission to seek and save the lost. We're in the game to reach lost people who are far from God. Our church is in a specific seasonal mission. Yes, we no doubt have the mission to be a church for unchurched people to find life in Jesus. That's right. We want to reach people who are far from God, reach people who don't know Jesus. And then we want to encourage them to follow him with everything that they have. But our church is actually in kind of a a three-year seasonal mission right now, our mission to go beyond. That's right. We believe what Ephesians 3.20 and 21, it says, it says that, that God has something for us above and beyond anything we can ask or imagine. If you're watching right now, if you're listening right now, how many of you believe that God has something above and beyond anything you can imagine for your life? He says about heaven, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for those who love him. I'm excited about that, man. That's more exciting than the Super Bowl to know that one day in heaven, that's right, God has something for me that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. No one can imagine how amazing it's going to be when we get to heaven. But we're in a mission right now. We're in a beyond mission. That beyond mission is to reach, build, and care beyond. That's right. Our church, we're united together in this mission right now. That mission is to reach, build, and care beyond. To reach is to start a second location. That's right. We're going to take the good news from our city and take it to another city. That makes me excited. That makes me want to do a touchdown dance. I won't do it for you. But that makes me excited to know that people care so much about reaching lost people that they'll provide the resources, they'll make the time to go above and beyond to reach people in another city. We're in the Beyond campaign, and that is to build beyond right now. And in this spring, we're going to be returning to our building. That's right. We're we're saying it. We're believing it that this spring we're going to be back in our building. And we're excited for that as all the updates to our eKids facility. Come on now, if you love eKids, to our to all of our areas, to our sanctuary, we've updated our technology across the board. Man, we've revamped our facility, and we're believing that it's going to be a better flow. It's just going to be a greater experience for you and your family. But we're, we've done that. We've updated. We, we're building our facility. We're trying to pay off our facility. And then finally, to care beyond. Several years ago, Danielle and I went to an orphanage in Haiti called La Simons, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, near that region. And we have literally taken a small little orphanage of about 30 kids and given them new housing, New, uh, new sport court, a uh, basketball court. We've updated their, their nutrition. We provide meals for them. We provided new bathrooms for them. We provided a new cafeteria teaching facility for them. And we've done that because of your generosity. We couldn't have done it without your help. And so we're kind of in a mission right now. Yes, no doubt. We're united. We're together. We're linked up. Like those carabiners, you, you link them together, you connect them whenever you're rope climbing. It's for safety, it's for protection. We're united to one another. Yet we're in this mission where we're going above and beyond to reach, build, and care beyond. And so as we start that new location, as we reach beyond, as we build beyond, and we take care of our current location, and we pay it off, and we update it, we also care beyond across the globe. We're taking care of an orphanage, and we've it's literally been a life-changing place, a life-changing situation that because of your generosity, we've been able to do that together. Isn't that awesome? Come on, church, give me an amen. If that is exciting to know that you have been a part of literally changing and transforming kids' lives, and we've done that together. We've been on a mission, and it's and there's been a great cost to reach the lost. There's been a great cost to take care of that orphanage. You know, when I think about the Super Bowl, I think about those 30-second commercials if you remember the babies who did the E-Trade commercials several years ago, and then there's all types of crazy commercials, Pepsi commercials, Dorito commercials. But there was a, a famous commercial. They, they say that it's one of the most famous commercials ever. It's way, way back in the 70s where one of the football players on the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mean Joe Green, he's walking through the tunnel and some little kid passes him a Coke and then he throws him the jersey. And it's kind of a cool, encouraging moment between, you know, a hero and a fan. But did you know that commercials today, you know what they cost? 
Go ahead, guess for just a moment. Guess, how much does a 30 second commercial cost? It costs over $5.6 million. Whoa, $5.6 million. Isn't that crazy to think that a commercial in the Super Bowl costs $5.6 million? Well, think about all these companies spending all of these resources, providing us entertainment, and we laugh and we have fun, and they spend all of this money just for a quick commercial. Well, church, we have something greater. We each have been given resources, and we have the opportunity to use those resources to advance the gospel. Jesus encourages us and tells us, yes, to bring it to the storehouse, to bring the tithe, to give back to God. The same way in which you give to others will be the same way that it's given back to you. The Apostle Paul tells us that if we would, then we could. I want to encourage you this year in 2021 to make it a priority, to just say, God, we're going to make sure we give you the first. No matter what comes in, whatever resources we get, that God, I believe in your mission. I want to be united to your mission. And so I want to encourage you this next year, be faithful in giving, be faithful in being generous, and see what God would do. Because we're doing something much greater than commercials. That's right. We're changing people's reservations in heaven. Come on, say it together. I'm changing people's reservations in heaven. I don't save their soul. Jesus does. But I get to be a part of providing an atmosphere, providing a place where marriages can be restored, where kids can grow in their faith, where lives can change, where students can find their mission and their purpose, their God-given purpose. And I believe the church, it is the hope of the world because we have the hope of the world and that hope is Jesus. So Super Bowl believers, man, we're those people that support our teammates. We're those people that are united to the vision but ultimately, we're those people that also there are seasons. Man, if you're going to play the game, the game of Christianity, if you're going to really be in this, man, you're going to have to play tough. Come on, say that with me. One, two, three, play tough. You got to have some grit. You got to have some toughness. I'm not talking about a six pack. I'm not talking about being shredded. I'm not talking about doing P90X. I'm talking about, man, you got to spiritually be tough. What does the Bible tell us? In Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Be strong in the Lord. That's right, say that together. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Verse 12, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life and death, fight to the finish against the devil and all of his angels. That's right. Paul's telling us, man, this is a fight. This is the faith fight. We're fighting for people's souls. The church is advancing the good news of Jesus about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. This, this is a faith fight. And so we got to play tough. We got to say, God, I'm committed to it. God, I'm committed to being a disciple, a Super Bowl believer. And God, I know in the end we win, but I got to get out on the gridiron. I got to get, even in all of my fumbles of life, I got to play tough. I got to stay in the game. I got to be focused. I got to have an attitude like Christ Jesus, who, who gave up his divine privileges and he became a servant. I got to be focused. I got to be teachable. I got to walk in humility. I got to be kind to others. I got to love people. But ultimately, I got to be tough. And we're living in a culture right now where people are pretty soft. People get offended by a lot of things. You got to be tough if you're going to last in Christianity. And through Christ, we can be. We can be strong. When we're weak, He is strong. He'll make us strong. He'll give us the faith to endure. When I think about people who are playing tough, I think about people in our church right now. There's a lady in our church who continually serves the church, who loves the church, who loves people. She writes cards She, on our behalf and on our church, and she's looking out for people and caring for people, and she just lost her husband. But she's playing tough. She's staying committed in the game. I think of a great guy in our church, a husband and a wife. His wife is going through chemo right now. It's the most difficult season ever for their family. And yet just this past weekend, he was serving on our security team. And our church and our team, we're praying for them. We're believing for God to do a miracle. But he's playing tough right now. He's not quitting. He's not sitting out. Let me ask you, are you playing tough or are you sitting out? I've talked to pastors all over the nation and during this pandemic, a lot of them have said, man, there were Super Bowl believers on our team before the pandemic. And then once the pandemic hit, man, people have gotten afraid. They've become fearful. And they've said, hey, I got to sit out for right now. 
And I just think this is a season more than ever. Man, this is where we got to play tough. Absolutely. If you have a medical condition, if you have any symptoms, if you're sick, if you're not feeling well, you shouldn't be going places out in public. But if you're healthy, I mean, if you can be there, man, don't let fear get in your mind. Don't let the enemy lie to you. God's the one who watches over your life. I mean, you got to get in the game. You got to play tough. You got to be there. There's sometimes there are relation, relational wrecks, relationships that get messy and get dicey and people get hurt and they get wounded and then they get offended. And Jesus says, woe to you when you live in those offenses, when you stay in those offenses. God wants us to move forward. Again, we got to support our teammates. We got to celebrate one another. We got to cheer each other on, be each other's number one fans. We got to make sure that we're united in that mission to seek and save the lost. But there are seasons where we just got to play tough. I'm so proud of our staff at Elevate Church, the staff of Elevate Church, and all of the key volunteer leaders, the dream team. Man, they played tough in this season. They didn't quit. Behind the scenes, they kept making it happen, providing experiences for our e-kids, doing some events with students, serving together, connecting with one another. Man, they played tough. I don't know about you, church, but I'm thankful for the people that I get to work with, that Danielle and I, we get to serve. Man, they played tough. And at the end, we serve a Savior who played tough. Jesus is the GOAT. He's the greatest of all time. He's the God of all time. He's the only God. And Jesus played tough. And there are seasons where sometimes we got to play tough. we got to carry one another, but we got to play tough. I want to encourage you, if you're sitting on the sidelines, if you're sitting out, man, you got to play tough. you got to keep going. Stay committed to Christ. Be that Super Bowl believer. What else do great teams, great winning characteristics, you got to have if you're going to follow Jesus, if you're going to stay in the game. Well, one thing is interesting about the game, the Super Bowl, is that if you're a Bears fan, I have to admit, I'm also a Bears fan as well, along with Tom Brady. But the Bears, it's interesting, and I'm sorry to say this, Bears fans, but it, it looks like we're never going to get the Super Bowl because I think in the contract for Super Bowl games, the temperature has to be above 50 degrees. And so for Bears fans, you can expect to never get the Super Bowl in Chicago unless they put some very cool expensive dome on there. But I started thinking about that word expectant. Expectant. If you're expectant of something, you're excited about it. You, you know that something is going to happen. And I think Super Bowl believers, champions, winners, I think they have a great expectancy. They're expectant that God is going to show up, that God is going to do something new. And I believe that. I think in our world, we, we've kind of lowered the bar for God. We've stopped praying big, bold prayers. We were expecting God just to do the same old thing he does. And maybe he'll answer our prayer. Maybe he won't answer our prayer. But I actually believe that God can do above and beyond anything we can ask or imagine. I think we should come to God with a great expectancy. I think we should be expectant for God to do something in our hearts. That's right, for God to do something in our hearts. Come on, hit your heart. I believe that God wants to do something in my heart, in your heart. I think God wants to do something in our church. I think God wants to do something in our city. And to the, to the degree in which we'll pray is to the degree at which we will see the activity of God. And so for me this year, I'm praying. I keep on a clock how many minutes I pray every day. I try to keep maybe not every minute, but all the minutes and just keeps me in a mindset of I'm praying, I'm believing, I'm praying for my church, I'm praying for my family, I'm praying for lost people, I'm praying for healing for people, I'm praying for people who are hurting. But we need to have a great expectancy. We need to be expectant as believers that God can do the impossible. Hey, would you just be honest right where you are? Have you maybe thought, I don't know if God can do the impossible. I'm kind of praying about this thing, but can God really do it? Well, this is what it says in Isaiah. It says, you did awesome things beyond our highest expectations. Come on, we got to read that again. You did awesome things beyond our highest expectations. Since the world began, no one has seen or heard of such a God as ours who works for those who wait for him. God works for those who wait for him. He's ready. We should have high expectations of our God. What expectations do you need? 
about God? What, what expectations are you believing for right now for God to do in your life? Go well, back to the game. Super Bowl believers, that winning mentality, that championship mentality, what do we got to have? We got to support our teammates. We got to be united. No doubt about it. We got to play tough. We got to be expectant. But then super teammates, Super Bowl believers, they're always ready to serve. They don't sit on the sidelines. They're ready to go. They're focused. Jesus said in Mark 10, 45, he said, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve others and give his life as a ransom for many. That's right. Jesus was a servant. Hey, if you're ever going to be like Jesus, you got to be a servant. See, serving does something in your heart. When you're serving others, you're not thinking about yourselves. It's, you're not thinking about, and that translates, that moves from your life to your marriage, to your relationship with your kids, to your relationships at work. See, being selfless, being ready to serve God anywhere, specifically in the church, but also specifically outside of the church. I mean, are you a servant? I love what, it's, what Paul challenged the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. He said, always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. That's right. Your church needs you. Your city needs you. Your world needs you. Nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. See, I think a lot of us are going to get to the end of our lives and we're going to be like, God, we were in these sports. We went to these vacations. We did all of these things. And some of those things are not bad. I do those things. My kids are in sports. We go on vacations. We do these things. But was church a priority? Was that one hour where the people of God gather together in the presence of God, they hear the, the plans of God, and then they worship to the promises of God. They worship how great our God is. And then they go out and do those things. Something special about the church. Nothing you do for God is ever useless. In this season, church, I want to tell you, E-Kids needs you. Students need you. Our welcome home team needs you. Our production team needs you. Our worship team needs you. Your church needs you. Our circles need you. Your church needs you. I don't know who told you the lie. I don't know who told you, sit on the sidelines, wait during this season, sit out. But no, your church needs you. God has invited you and he's saying hey, anything you do when you show up to church, when you show up online, when you give, when you sacrifice, nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. With all of us, the clock is ticking. Time is running out. I recently ran across a study that said the average age and could be 78 to 80 years of age. And they compared that to a 24 hour day that if it's 3 a.m., you're 10 years old. If it's 6 a.m., you're 20 years old. If it's 9 a.m., you're 30 years old. If you're 40, it's noon. And if, as you get older, the day goes on quicker and quicker. And if you look at that clock, you see wherever your age is, you see just how much time you have left to live according to this average age. And it makes us remind ourselves, hey, what are we living for? How much time do we have left? If half of your life is gone, that means like a day, it's lunchtime. And we know that many times we've eaten lunch and then, whoa, where did the day go? And so we all have just enough time. I want to invite you with the time that you have left to be a super, that's right, say it with me, super bull believer. Be a winner, be a champion. Be one of those believers that says, I'm supporting my teammates. I'm I'm doing those things that God wants me to do. I'm encouraging them. I'm celebrating them. I'm supporting my teammates. I'm united to my teammates. I'm playing tough. Even when I'm hurt, even when I'm wounded, I'm staying in the game. I'm sharing what I'm going through, but I'm staying tough. I'm playing tough. Because Jesus, he played tough for you and for me on the cross. But I'm expecting that God's going to do something good each and every week, each and every day of my life. Today is the day that the, that the Lord has made. So let's rejoice and be glad you know it today. And then ultimately, let's be ready to go. Let's be ready to serve. Let's be those Super Bowl believers because we know that nothing we do for the Lord is useless. Hey, right where you are, I want to pray with you this weekend. If any of those questions, if any of those characteristics, you're like, man, I, I need to 
to download some of those into my life. I need to be ready to go. Hey, I need to play tough in this season when it's difficult. I need to stay faithful to God. Hey, I need to be united to my teammates. I need to be supporting my teammates. Maybe you just need to be showing up for my teammates. Maybe this is a time where you go, okay, it's been long enough. It's time for me to get, get back in church. I'm not gonna be afraid. I'm gonna trust God. Ultimately, His clock is over my life and I trust Him. I'll be wise, I'll be smart, but God controls my life. Or maybe just maybe when you think about your life and you hear me talk about reservations in heaven, you're not quite sure if you have a reservation in heaven. Well, the Bible is very clear. It says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord would be saved. And so if you're here right where you are right now, if you need to make that a decision, God, I want a reservation in heaven. I want to be saved. I want to be right with you just like Zacchaeus was. Jesus came to his house and he believed that Jesus was the Son of God. If you need to do that, you make this your prayer. Just say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Today I'm choosing Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. He rose again. And through him, I can be saved. I can have life with purpose now. And I can spend eternity in heaven with God. Today I'm choosing that life. I want to be a Super Bowl believer to the best of my ability. Just tell him, say, God, forgive me. Give me a brand new start today. I'm choosing to follow Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me all the days of my life. God, I want to join your team today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, if you made that decision, all of heaven is celebrating. Come on, church. All of heaven is celebrating. Amen. And you made a decision to follow Jesus. You're on his team. All of heaven, they're celebrating. Hey, don't, don't let that decision go without telling someone. Hey, tell us, email us, info at elevatechurch.org. Let us know below. Celebrate with us because it's the most important decision you've ever made. And God has a next step for you. He wants you to be a part of the church. He wants you to find your purpose, find your place. And we want to connect with you. We want to know about that decision. And for the rest of us, hey, let's be those Super Bowl believers. Let's be people who are giving our best to God. That's right, because Jesus is ultimately the GOAT, and when we're on His team, we win. Well, thank you for joining us this week. Thank you so much for partnering with us week in and week out. If you love to give to Elevate Church and be a part of, of advancing the gospel, you can do that by giving online at elevatechurch.org, or you can give on the Elevate Church app, whether it's $10 or $10,000. Hey, every gift matter. Every gift is important, and it goes to help us make reservations in heaven. It helps us find people and helps us reach people and helps us give them the life that they need. 